Today, I'm gonna show you a color changing chemical reaction that looks like magic, but actually has a really cool explanation behind it, and it's also simple enough for you to do at home. I at first didn't even believe that liquid could go through multiple colors of the rainbow until I tried it out for myself. Yep, that's right, it's a reaction called the chemical chameleon, and it is a great example of how chemistry is definitely the most visually captivating science. So, let's get to the fun part. Now in order to do this reaction, it is actually surprisingly simple, and all you'll need is three chemicals, potassium permanganate, glucose aka sugar, and sodium hydroxide. Oh yeah, and of course, dihydrogen monoxide, which will be our polar solvent. Strangely, I couldn't find it anywhere and had to unfortunately purchase it off of Sigma Aldrich. Onto a stir plate, I can put on a large 600ml beaker for this demonstration. Into it, I pour a good amount of water, followed by like the smallest amount of potassium permanganate powder ever, like it's barely even visible. I can then drop in a stir bar and give it a good mix, and you can see how the solution turns into a nice deep purple color, characteristic of the potassium permanganate. However, it was apparently still too saturated to be well visible on camera. Thus, to make the color a little lighter, I had to dilute it a bunch more with water, which I sped up as you can see here. To be honest, from what I heard, the exact masses and amounts of each chemical aren't super important, as in the end they'll just be affecting the reaction rate, so I just eyeballed each amount. The reaction should still work perfectly though. Next, I can set this first solution aside and prepare our second one, which is a solution of sugar and sodium hydroxide. So first, I'll pour in a layer of sodium hydroxide pellets, and then I can cover it with another thicker layer of my granular sugar. Again, it doesn't really matter the specific amounts that you use, it should in the end still work fine. I can then pour in a good amount of water and stir it until it all dissolves. This took a while and I did end up having to put in a bit more water to make everything dissolve. Now comes time for a reaction. I can pour our second solution into the first one and... You can see how it shifts through a variety of colors, first from purple, then to grey, then to green, and finally to a bright yellow. This reaction really looks quite insane, and the explanation behind it is the changing oxidation state of the manganese. You may have known that potassium permanganate is a really strong oxidizer, and in this case, the chemical chameleon is indeed a redox reaction in disguise. The sugar is thus the reducing agent, and it reduces the permanganate. When the permanganate reacts with the sugar, it usually attacks at this primary alcohol site, which can readily be oxidized by a strong oxidizer like our permanganate into a carboxylic acid through a pretty long mechanism which I won't include here. In the end, the permanganate will be reduced into manganate, where the manganese instead bears a 6 plus oxidation state instead of the 7 plus. Here the 6 plus oxidation state is now a green color. Finally, this manganate further undergoes a disproportionation reaction leading to the formation of manganese dioxide, which when suspended in the water looks yellow. The disproportionation reaction also takes longer to form our MnO2, which kind of explains why the last step was slower. But wait, if there's just a transition of three colors from purple to green then to yellow, then why was there a weird grey color in between the purple and green? Well, great question, we didn't actually miss anything, but it's simply just the color in between the transition from purple to green. For instance, if we mix our permanganate purple and the green, you can see how it makes the exact same grey color. It's like how, when you go from yellow to blue, there's going to be green in between. The reason why this reaction was so colorful is because of the variety of oxidation states and their different colors provided by our manganese. If you guys want more info on the mechanism, you can check out the video linked in the description by 2AM Productions. Also guys, let me know in the comments if you'd like some more inorganic chem videos. I've only made a few like our iodine one, but after all, my channel is called Carbon12, right? I wanted to sincerely thank my first three $5 and above Patreon supporters, Dangerous Lab, Simone67, and SuperPro. Their support means a lot and I will provide behind the scenes, ad free content, shoutouts, and more. Purchasing these chemicals required a good amount of money and as a high school student, just $3 would be of great help for me to continue providing educational and quality chem content. So I want to thank you all for watching and if you like chem, please consider a sub.